We're reaching the end of the H row with H11, and this block is laid out in the book. The arrows that I put on here correspond with the arrows on my pieces that I did during my block prep. I have a directional fabric, and I wanted to make sure that these pieces are going to be going in the same direction when I get my block assembled. So I have my pieces laid out here on my bin and I have the triangles in the middle here and everything's got their little arrows in the right spot. Assembly with this in order is not terribly critical. What I'm going to do, and you can do what you want to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this in pairs. I'm going to put these together, these together, these together, these together, and then I will assemble the center octagon. So this forms an octagonal shape in the middle right here. I don't know if it'll stay. There you go. All right, so this forms an octagon. So I will assemble these in pairs and then in you know, a half a circle and then a half circle and then sew it together. So that'll be my middle. For the outside, I'm going to pair this up with this one and then pair this up with this one, so on and so forth. And then, you know, assemble these to the octagon one at a time. So essentially, when I do each one of these, so let's say I do this piece to this piece, and then I will assemble this and stitch this here to here. And then I'll have this piece and this piece already put together, so then I will stitch it from here to here to here, and so on and so forth until I finish the block. But with English paper piecing, it's not terribly critical, but that's probably the assembly that I'm going to do. So my basting, I'm going to make my tags come out on the ends, which means this one is going to go down first. And then these, I, the, this angle right here, this angle right here, is really hard to keep sharp. And I've done it with this first, and then these two, I've done them in this way, and I've done them in all these different orders. And because this isn't a 45 or a 90 degree angle, or even a pointy angle, it's really difficult to get this exactly where it goes. So I will do my best to fold it exactly where it needs to be. But this piece is really going to give me where my corners are. And you can feel it in the fabric. So this piece will show me where I need to be. And the fact that, you know, you can, you, but you'll have to feel through the fabric to find this. Because even though you baste it, because I, I will base this like this and then fold it but I'll try to find this point but it's easy to lose that point I will feel for this corner each time I go to assemble it just to make sure I get as close as I possibly can because because it's hard to it's excuse me because it's easy to lose this corner it's easy to get this off center for these I'm gonna base this first and then, you know, these, these are, I'm going to base these the same way. So this is going to go down first, and then probably then this one, and then this one. You want to do them in the same order on all of these, because then your tags will then uh, pinwheel in the middle, and then they'll nest correctly. So I'm going to start basting the center section and assembling this before I do the outside. Alright, so for basting these center octagonal triangles, I am going to take the bottom and baste that, and then I take the side, and then the this is the last side, so I end up with the tag pointing this way, and what then I can do, if I do them all the same way, I will be able to nest them in a, in a circle, and then um, they'll fit better, so I can get a sharper point. So that way they're, oops, <laughs> I'm 
that way they sit on top of one another and then not only do they sit better in your sharper point but then when you go to quilt it it's not as thick now this is the outside portion of the block and I wanted to explain what I mean by feeling for this point so I'm going to take my piece and I'm going to use my glue pen and base this. I do the outside of the fabric. This is a really big piece, so there's a lot of blousing or whatever you want to call that. And then I will fold this up. I'm going to turn this because I'm at a really weird angle. And I will push this tight against the edge, but when you get to the corner, you gotta be careful about how much you push because you can fold that corner in because I get real aggressive with this. Okay, so I have this whole big long edge glue basted. Now I'm going to base this top part. And fold that down. Now, if you push on it, you're going to naturally get some bowing here, which actually helps. It's not required, but it does kind of help. All right, so this is going to fold over at more than a 45 degree angle. So I need to only glue base to about here because that's the stuff that's going to touch fabric. And then this didn't get put down, so I'm going to put that down a little bit. And this, all right. So. You can feel for this point right there. And I'm going to try to get my corner, my fold, I'm going to try to get my fold as best I can right, right there. And then stick it down. And then I go down to the bottom here and find this one and stick that down. And then I'll come back in here and push this. And if that folds up and pleats, you can you can fix it. There you go. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. So this came up a little bit, so I'm going to stick some glue under there and push it down. And then do this kind of number. And close my glue pen so it doesn't dry out. And then feel for my corner here, right there. And then try to get my fold to go at that corner so I have a visual of where it is going to be. And then I'm going to fold this. Okay, I'm going to fold that. And then and that's my pieces. Okay, so I got half of my, or my octagon halves made, and the tags all nest into each other on each one of these. So I'm going to take this, and they're going to nest into each other here, and I'm going to line up my ends and tape it. Put this, whoops. Put this one here and then line that up and then same thing on the other side. And then that should be Once I get to the middle, I'll be able to fix that and line it up real nicely. When you're putting these together, if this point is off, then you're not going to know where to put the end of this triangle. And this point originally was off, and it was too far down here. So what happened is this is looks long looked longer, so I had to fidget with it and find it and line it up. This point... On the end, it's a little longer, as you can see, because 
I had glue on this fabric and so it bunched at the corner or at the point on this white fabric. I can I will be able to work that in. And the other thing is is that I cut this a little short because I folded it over too aggressively. Again, I can fix that once I get to the point. So I'll be able to line this up so that it works itself into the sashing just fine. But this was significantly off. So if it's off, it's not the end of the world. You just got to know how to work it back in. So like this one's a little off there, and that's because my point's not quite lined up. So there's, there's ways to fix this, and sometimes you can do it with the stitching, and sometimes you can do it with refolding and things like that. All right, so I got my center assembled, and I've got my pieces with connected with the sides. So now I have to get these lined up. So I'm going to put these on one at a time. I'm going to take this, I'm going to tape it, I'm going to put my tape on here first, and then put my other tape on here. Okay, so make sure you match up opposite colors, and I'm going to take this and match it up here, and I'm going to make sure that I line up this white point with this, and it might be a little off again, but I can feel where it really is. And get that taped and then I will make sure that I square that up when I get to stitching it and then it's just a matter of adding the next one and so on and so forth get my block done so I have three of my four side pieces connected I this one's not connected yet I just wanted to show it actually going in there so this one will nest into these my flags will move and so this slots into there. I'll make sure that my point comes here. This point's a little shy, but I can I can um, move that into position when I attach the sashing. And then while I'm stitching, I'm noticing that these these flags these tags are coming up so I had to be careful because one of them popped out and I almost stitched it in there and then this one looks like it's going to come to a good point now I have a completed h11 block <laughs> 